Imagine yourself having some sort of powerful experience that will leave its mark on you, one way or another, for better or for worse. It could be a positive or it could be a negative. Um, five years after that experience, and it's a powerful one, one of these sort of watershed moments in your life, you get into an accident and suffer brain damage. And that memory is, or the part of your brain that contains that memory is, I don't know, neutralized or destroyed or something like this, so that you have no conscious memories of any of that, any of that profound experience. Has that experience been abolished? Does that experience leave other marks besides those in memory? It's an interesting thought because, you know, it kind of blows the mind a bit when you consider the butterfly effect that attaches itself to absolutely every action that we ever perform or every thought we ever think and every experience we ever have. What effects do these experiences have on us? And on what level do they affect us? Because as I say, you, your past is a, the aggregate of your memories, yes, but there's other things. <laughs> your personality, your character, your outlook, whatever you want to call it, it's all been formed by these experiences. So, memory, is that really enough to encompass that which you have experienced? I don't think so. A lot of what we experience doesn't really affect us consciously, but it might affect us unconsciously. That's why I think that terms like experience and memory and all that aren't really adequate, but they're the only Western tradition um, that we have. Um, I would say that the Eastern term karma far more um, exhaustively describes this phenomenon of that which affects you and on what level, because things can affect you on a multiplicity of levels. Um, what does the past even mean in this context, or the future? Because the future can affect you in terms of um, what your plans are and how you, planning for things will, or looking forward to things or dreading things or whatever, will affect you in the now. Um, are we just the aggregate of our experiences or our... Um, or our memories, perhaps, memories of different things like emotional memories or you know, subconscious memories, subliminal memories, whatever, um, nonverbal memories. Um, or is there something that is something of a canvas that's being drawn on, that's being painted on? It's a vexed point because you sort of say, well, what am I? Well, Pantahrai says, I am never one thing for more than a millisecond, even less than that. Um, and it also calls into question the ability to actually ascertain what even we are in any concrete, um, absolute sense. Because our characters are constantly being molded and developed, and it never stops, really. It's a little aphorism, I think, from Leonard Nimoy in his book of poetry. Like a snapshot you develop, unlike a snapshot you never stop. <laughs> this is, you know, old-fashioned uh, chemical photography we're talking about here. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's the idea of experiences um, is a fascinating one. And as I say, meditation is kind of, in my opinion, designed to come to grips with one's experiences, but experience in and of itself doesn't really tell the whole story of karma, because experience leaves marks on us. It leaves marks on something. They have effects, and those effects are not as easy to quantify and to nail down as one might think when you start to think about experience and the effects of experience. If you've noticed over the years, um, my situation or my point of view in YouTube has actually developed. Uh, I started off more or less just with the cogito, which is somehow vaguely solipsistic. If you don't pursue it, then there's experiences. 
which seem real. They seem as real as anything is, and as much as we can say anything is real, we have to conclude that an experience is real. How about the effects of those experiences? Never mind what effects I'm talking about. Any effects of experience. Any experience you ever have and any effect it ever has on any part of what we might consider you. <laughs> um, how do you nail that one down? 